Hi, in this lesson, we're learning about webinar event team roles so that you can set up your team to have all the different responsibilities and features that they need so that you can have amazing webinars. Hi, I'm Angel from RT Course Experts, and we help creative online course teachers with their tech. In this lesson, we're going to learn about webinar event team roles. Uh, your team may be struggling with who does what during webinars, how many accounts do you need, what settings should you specify for every single member of your team. These are all problems so <laughs> that you're going to be having and you want your webinars to run as smooth as possible. In this lesson, we're gonna go over the different roles and we're gonna talk about a typical run of show that you might use in your webinar. First of all, what are webinar roles? Well, roles are assigned to every team member and guest on a webinar. Everybody that's on the webinar has a role, whether you explicitly give them a role or they just inherit a default role like attendee. Everybody on the webinar that has an email that registered or didn't register and is in there in that session, everybody has a role and those roles connect to features so that every person is either allowed or not allowed uh, features from the webinar based on their role. Roles are a nice easy way to identify a set of features and if you have that role, you get those features. First, there are leadership roles. These are the main administration roles that you get with your webinar. Some of the leadership roles include scheduling webinars, the default settings, seeing people, starting and ending the webinar, sharing screen content, drawing and annotations, providing handouts, changing users midway. Hey, you know, I want to take this person and make them a panelist. I want to allow them to speak, all those kind of rules. Muting users, who can ask questions, when can you ask questions, creating polls, seeing reports, and managing all the recordings. These are all the administrative leadership roles and features that are available on most of the webinar platforms. One of the most important leadership roles are the administrator. This is the owner of the account. They have access to all the tiers, licenses, billing, they can change the email, change the password. They're the number one person who owns the account for your company. And they are also the most powerful account on your webinar profile. Next up is the host or organizer. Now you may be a smaller company and you're the admin and you're the main host and that's totally fine. Or you may assign a host and they're the main leader of that particular webinar and the main scheduler. And by the way, as an account, you may have several hosts. If you're the main host, you may also want to assign a co-host. Maybe you're traveling just in case your internet goes down. The co-host can set up the slides, let people in the room do all these other things. So the co-host or alternative host, they help the leader with the webinar. And it's great to have an alternative host just in case something goes wrong. You have dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of people coming to your webinar. You want to have a couple of people to back you up and have content and all this stuff ready in case anything were to go wrong on anyone's internet connection. Next up are the actual panelists or the presenters. They can actually share their video, their audio, they can annotate, they may be speaking to slides or it may be a traditional panel where there's three to four people on screen or they may be the main person. So the host opens up the meeting and introduces a guest. And also you may wanna even break out the presenter role. The presenter role doesn't need to be in front of the camera. It could be behind the scenes, a backstage, maybe your virtual assistant or maybe your AV tech sets up the presenter role so they know exactly which slides or which videos to show at any point. 
they have this right, this role, this ability to take over the screen, show the screen, switch the content, show this other camera, turn off this person's video. Now there are consumer roles. These are the people that you've invited to your webinar. Uh, they can typically watch the webinar, they can chat, maybe they can raise their hand or ask questions or see and answer polls. So these are the things that the guests will be able to do when they join your webinar. Some webinars break this up into two parts. One is the registrants, people who received an email, they spilled out a form, they might have paid or maybe it's free, but nevertheless, they may have been required to register for the webinar instead of just popping in with a webinar Zoom link as an example. So some webinar platforms really break that out and have this kind of registrant role versus the attendee role. The attendee role is what the majority of your guests are gonna be. Once they arrive, they join, maybe they're in the waiting room, but ultimately they're in the webinar and they're watching your production. They might be clicking on your offer, they might be learning extra content, and you might have their email, and maybe afterwards you email them a recording. Okay, so those are some of the main roles that you're gonna configure and set up for your webinars. You may have a tiny team, two, three, four people, and you may give people different roles. You may have just some helpers or maybe some friendly guests that you give the special abilities to see the chat or maybe to ask questions. But those are the main roles that you're gonna set up for a successful webinar. And whether it's live or pre-recorded or free or paid, all the variations, you're gonna probably wanna identify who does these roles, regardless if they have more privileges ahead of time, that's okay. But at least you've identified who does what and who has those abilities to do those things in case you needed them to perform those functions, those features based on their role. Let's go into an example. So typically in a webinar, you might have kind of a, a little bit of a script, but you might do it in a spreadsheet format or in a bulleted list. And that's called a run of show. And it basically says, hey, when the webinar starts, who does what? At this point, this person does this thing, this other person does this thing, then this next stage happens and on and on. So let's go over a typical run of show for your webinar and talk about who might be doing what, what roles are used, what features are used, and, and that'll help you plan a more successful webinar. First of all, you might activate the webinar, right? So this is where the host or the co-host launches the webinar but it may not be fully on where everybody can just come in and hear you talk yet. Some people like to set it up and turn it on in a practice mode where they're getting ready. They might verify the camera. They might check out that the slides are working and might wait for the key people to join before they let everybody else in. So you're activating the webinar, you're going in, you're logging in, you're making sure you can turn on the webinar. Then once you're in the webinar, you might tweak some of the roles. So you're making sure the panelists are there. You might upgrade or downgrade people to say, oh, you're an attendee, wait a minute, you should be a panelist or, hey, I'm going to assign this other person as an alternative host just in case something goes wrong with my connection. So you're tweaking all the roles. You're looking at the main host and panelists and presenters, and you're giving everybody the rights and you're testing everything. Next, you're going to get the screens ready. You might have an intro video that's going to play, or maybe you have a deck, a PowerPoint, Google Slides, Keynote, etc. You don't want that editor view. You want that slide all the time. There's issues where if you have multiple monitors, one panel shows, one screen shows up one place, the other is in the other one, you know, people's home cameras. So there's all sorts of issues. So you're going to want to make sure that your videos are ready, your content is ready, and also that the different people that might be on screen are arranged so you have a nice layout. If they're not talking, you may want to hide them. All these kind of things happen in this stage. Next up, you're officially going to start the webinar. So that's when people that might be in a waiting room, they come on in, they're able to see stuff. Maybe you might have somebody on your team do some small talk, like welcoming everybody in the chat room. Where are you from? Welcome by name or just by chatting. So you're gonna to wanna to get everybody warmed up in the room 
before you officially start. And then you're going to also want to wait a few minutes so that you can get the majority of people to join your webinar. Next up, another role that happens is handling issues. So this is maybe there's several people who are speaking, but somebody's mic is on. You might want to mute them or you might want to send them a private note to, so that they can mute themselves. Maybe you're experiencing internet lag. Maybe one person's at a hotel or there's a weather situation at one location. So you're going to want to be monitoring all that stuff to make sure that everybody feels confident in what they're presenting and there's no latency. And finally, you might be handling some, some issues, right? So maybe you're going to be having call to actions or links that you're going to be sharing with your audience. You want to make sure that those links work. And if you're seeing anybody in the chat room that doesn't have them, or maybe your webinar is presented in a frame and below your frame, there's a button to do some main action, like order a service, order your coaching, your course, join your community. So you're going to want to make sure that it is assigned to provide tech support in case any of these things happening. And they might also want to toggle a panelist. So if a panelist is trying to speak, but maybe it doesn't work, they might be able to switch to a different camera and do all these different things. So you need somebody to handle these behind the scene issues and looking around while the main speaker is ready to perform and have full energy. Another role is handling interactivity. So this is monitoring the chat room, maybe sending prompts. Where's everybody from, you know, or what, what are your biggest problems? Those kinds of prompts to really connect, especially while they're waiting and maybe content is not there, or you might be collecting information. Maybe there's questions and answers that are happening. Like maybe among the audience, they're asking. Uh, about which technique, which software to use, which problems are being handled, which books. And this interactivity also includes polls that you can use. You might be sharing resources and links. So you might want to have this person support interactivity, really be the behind the scenes MC there and are talking to the, the guests. Somebody on your team, it could be the same person, should be also handling questions. So as all the things are happening in the large chat room that might be flying through with different topics, different questions, different suggestions, you're going to want somebody on your team to pick and choose the best of those questions and be able to give them directly to your presenters and hosts. So that when they're ready to speak, they have their questions ready to go. And they might also have one or two free canned messages while their questions are, you know, are being collected and you're asking, hey, does anybody have any questions? While that's happening, your host can start off with a perfect common question. And then in addition to that, as all the different questions are coming in, you can have your helper role find one or two really great questions and extract those from the big giant chat room into a direct message with the host and the presenters. Another important step in the webinar is closing out the event. That's where maybe a presenter is speaking, they give it back to the main host. The main host provides the final messaging, shares links, provides resources, and drives that main call to action that you want your live webinar people to do. And then finally, you're going to actually wrap up the webinar. So that's where you stop the webinar. All the attendees are dismissed, their session closes, and uh, you and your team can, can process or even email the recordings. There are going to be a variety of recordings that are uh, stored. They might be one main recording. There might be multiple recordings, depending on cameras and audio. Um, you and your team should schedule some time to review the stats and maybe the reports of the webinar, how many people actually registered, how many actually showed up. Those are the different roles that you're going to do as you go through your webinars. So it's important to utilize your team, give them well-defined roles, give them the capabilities and features that they need to back each other up. Think about possible problems. You might want to give some of the different people slightly elevated roles so they can back each other up. And with all these well-defined roles, and a small team, you can have a really successful webinar. So now you're a lot smarter on webinars. Don't forget, 
Go to your settings before your webinars, double check you have a few roles, go ahead and, and get that small team to back you up, give them some roles, do a practice session and have a script, get your resource links, get your documents, your prompts, your practice questions, get that all ready in a nice little run of show document, and you'll be able to have a really successful webinar. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. Subscribe now to get more tips for creative online course teachers. And if you need any tech help with your courses, your community, or your teacher website, visit www.rtcourseexperts.com. Talk to you soon.